Welcome to So Please Understand, where every conversation is a step toward greater knowledge and personal growth. I'm your host, Holly Davis, here to explore, learn, and inspire alongside you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to So Please Understand. I'm Holly Davis, your host, and if you're new here, welcome. And if you've listened to one of my podcasts before, welcome back. (laughs) So today we're diving into what life really looks like 10 months postpartum and how that journey has felt as someone having their baby in their mid thirties. So whether you're in the thick of parenthood, preparing for it, or just curious about this stage of life, I hope my reflections resonate and remind you that you're not alone in figuring it all out. So for some personal context, for me, this past year has definitely been a transformational one, and so was the year before. So in so on January 13th, 2024, I had my third child, my son, Apollo Davis, and he is the youngest of my four children and the youngest of my three biological children. So last year I got married and became, I went from a single mom with two daughters to a blended family of now six. So my husband had a son who's now my bonus son. And so I have a 10 year old daughter, two seven and a half year olds. So seven and a half year old boy and a seven and a half year old girl. And now a 10 month old son. So a lot going on and motherhood has been beautiful exhausting and everything in between. I've learned so much about myself, my relationships, and what it just means to show up every day, even when it's messy. If there is one takeaway I want you to hold on to today is this. Motherhood is not about perfection. It's about showing up with love and learning as you go. And also say, I would say giving yourself grace. (laughs) So to start off with, let me talk about my physical recovery and health. So 10 months postpartum kind of feels like this middle ground. I'm kind of not the same as I was before, but also um, I'm past that immediate healing phase. It was six to eight weeks. Um, I was able to have a, um, my delivery went well. Um, I did an epidural, it was a vaginal delivery. Um, I was in labor a while, about nine hours and some change. Um, and then post pretty much right after having my uh, son at like six in the morning, about three hours later, I was on a post-op table because I didn't want to have any more children. So I had my fallopian tubes completely removed. Um, So for me, the only way to have children at this point in my life is through IVF. Uh, So I didn't, like the option isn't completely gone, but the natural route um, is not possible for me. And I'm okay with that. So for me, I found that recovery in my mid thirties is different for sure than what I, than what it was in my twenties with my daughters. Um, It's been slower. Uh, That's okay. Um, I've definitely, I know my body better. I've learned to listen to my body more than ever. Um, Another part of my postpartum recovery was not only did I have surgery right after, I also got shingles. (laughs) And yes, I got shingles in my 30s. Um, If you look up shingles, basically if you've had chicken pox before as a kid, which I did, (laughs) and... um, yeah, you, you pretty much can get shingles when you're older. And I got shingles two weeks after having a baby on the left side of my torso. So I was in severe pain, not just from having surgery on my stomach, but also nerve pain um, from the shingles blisters. And so that kind of complicated my postpartum recovery. It actually added time to my maternity leave. I don't, in essence, I had to 
stop my maternity leave claim, file a separate short-term disability claim to kind of go through the healing of the shingles. Um, I deal and kind of deal with the, what they call, um, I basically have nerve damage on the left side of my torso, which is normal for like the first few months after having shingles, but mine didn't go away. So I still have nerve pain um, to this really 10 months because I mean, it was two weeks. I, I I got shingles at the end of January, a couple weeks after giving birth. So I mean, to this point, I still have uh, nerve pain on the left side of my torso. Um, so yeah, so like I, in, in, in my healing, like I still deal with, uh, nerve, nerve damage. Um, and so I deal with like chronic pain, but also on top of that, just trying to sleep. And so that just complicates like when you're not sleeping because you're getting up with the baby and then you also have to deal with, uh, pain. Um, it just sometimes can make getting sleep a little more difficult. But I can honestly say the pain is not as severe as it was. Um, it's getting better. And what the doctors have told me is that hopefully most people's pain resolves a year uh, from having shingles. And so hopefully in January of next year, I shouldn't be in much pain. Um, but also they did tell me I could, this pain could last me the rest of my life or for years to come because it's nerve damage. Um, so that was rough. Um, I wasn't able to really breastfeed in the way that I liked because of it being on my torso. I didn't want to risk giving it to my son. Um, and if you look up shingles, when it shows, when the blisters show up on only one side of your body, um, the blisters can go like all over. And it's not like it's like a like a blanket of blisters, like necessarily like a patch that goes from one side. It's literally like I might have a patch here, a patch going up my back, um, and then the scarring's pretty nasty. So, um, yeah, just dealt with that. <laughs> so I, I can say now I'm in a better place. I'm getting better sleep. Um, but, yeah, it definitely wasn't an easy journey. When it comes to, like, the self-care side of things, right, um, that looks different now too for me. Um, I had no problem getting up in the morning, taking my 45 minute walks and doing a workout video. Um, I'm lucky if I can steal about 10 minutes to stretch, um, go for a walk with the stroller. Um, and I feel like self-care just looks different. It's not to say don't make it happen. I think just time management is really key when it comes to the self-care piece. So I'm still in my 10 months getting it on my calendar to like go get my hair trimmed or get my nails in or eyebrows waxed. But I've been making time for it and it's happening. So nothing extravagant, but I'm doing the small moments of nourishment that I need. So if I'm feeling like, hey, like, I just need to do it. I just, you know, ask my husband for the support, whether that's watching the kids or, you know, driving me there, what whatever the case, so I can, you know, get that self-care that I need. So the takeaway I would say related to physical recovery and health um, is going to be, you know, give yourself grace and take that time. Um my body has done something incredible and I recognize that healing doesn't have a deadline and every small step that I take is enough. So I understand I'm going to have moments where I'm like really aggressive. I'm able to get in a work in a workout in day after day after day, week after week. And then I might be a period where I don't do it for a month and then I have to start over, but I'm giving myself that grace that, you know, as long as I keep it, frame of mind and I have every intention and put a plan in place to get back to it I will but I understand like if I need to prioritize sleep just so I can make sure I'm functioning for work and the children and awake then that's what I'm going to prioritize now when it comes to the emotional and mental journey <laughs> ooh, that has definitely different 
So when it comes to this identity shift, which I know it gets talked about, and I can honestly say between each of my children that I've had, I definitely have observed that identity shift um, in a way that has always been positive. So motherhood has been this fascinating and sometimes hard identity shift. Um, I love being a mom, but there are moments where I miss the freedom of, I don't even want to say like pre-mom life because I had my daughters in my 20s, uh, my first daughter at 25. I think I've just learned to accept it's not about choosing one or over the other. I think it's about blending the two and just realize like I'm still me and I'm 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 just evolving. So, for example, I can say like with every child I've been able to complete additional degrees, get job certifications, um, elevate in different job positions to earn more money. Um, it just looks different. But I have definitely felt that like, ugh, like this is going to be a shift because now I have one more child to consider and incorporate my time management. Um, and I can honestly say even with my um, with, with my son, a lot of the things I was active with, I've kind of had to take a step back. But understanding I needed to give myself that space and time to to see if that's something I still wanted to do. Like, it, it, do I want those activities, those, those people I was socializing with, do I want to continue to do those in this new phase of life? And, you know, I think that's still um, up for debate 10 months postpartum. So I think that's just something you have to understand that you'll kind of be faced with, do I keep doing this? Do I not? Or maybe do I reevaluate if there's a, a way I can shift this to, to be maybe something more th- worth, more worthwhile to continue doing? Um, for me, content creation was a part of that identity shift. Like if I'm going to create content, like what does that look like? Do I want to continue to go down like how I was doing it previously or does it shift um, now that there are, there have been changes in my life? I'm a wife now. I am I have a big family. Um, I'm about to finish my doctorate. So, yeah, I think that identity shift is definitely a real thing. And especially in your 30s when you've kind of been moving in a certain way. And for me, what you know, at this point, you know, it had been almost seven years since I had, you know, was in that newborn stage. And so definitely this identity shift, this go around and being in my mid thirties, um, that was, it was, it was definitely big for me. There is so much pressure to bounce back physically, mentally, have everything be figured out, be a perfect mom. And I know social media does not help that either. I've had to consciously remind myself that perfection is an illusion. And some days it's just about surviving. That's okay. And I am a military wife. My husband does deploy. And he was away six months. So I had my son and about three months later, he was gone for six months. And so that was really, there are days I was just surviving, getting up, taking the kids to school having the baby until the baby I felt comfortable putting the baby in daycare uh, before I went back to work um you know getting up every few hours and running on little sleep and getting sick very easily once my son went to daycare and I'm just trying to make it so I I I get the whole um thinking you kind of just have to have it like together structured organized and I just want to say like give yourself the grace and that there are just rough days in that beginning stages you know even with a partner even with help and support it can just be a lot when you're tired and you're trying to like feed the baby change the diapers and then if you have other kids like give them attention spend time with them so um 
I just navigate expectations of kind of just I ask people what do they need from me and then I try to say hey this is what I can do um, this is what I have the bandwidth to do or the mental capacity to do and I try to describe it in that way uh, so people understand that um, you know I, I have my limitations because I'm still in that postpartum healing process um, when it comes to mental health, <laughs> um, one of the biggest game changers for me that I had not done in my previous pregnancies was um, get a therapist. Like I got a therapist like maybe like a few years after having my daughters, but I had a therapist like within three months of having my son. And I think I needed to acknowledge that when things get chaotic or stressful, I needed to have my feelings acknowledged and not shove them aside. Therapy has been a lifeline. It has helped me untangle tough moments like in friendships, relation, like my marriage with family around like the kind of support that I needed um, and how to show up better for myself and, and for my children, for my family. Like I realize that postpartum not there's postpartum depression but there's also postpartum anxiety which I was dealing with because going back to the identity shift navigating expectations um just the physical recovery around giving birth had been you know especially difficult for me having the shingles complicated um, I, I was going through a lot and then it was impacting how I, how I was dealing with my ADHD. And so through my postpartum journey, I talked to my therapist and we had always talked about me having ADHD, but I, I, I officially got a diagnosis where it was like documented on paper I got the medical code that says I have the di diagnosis and um, I, I ultimately got on a non-stimulant to help me with the focus on certain tasks because it was hard with everything going on and it helped with the anxiety and kind of calm a lot of that overthinking to help me sleep better, process situations in a more calm manner um, and just not always I wasn't always going to be it helped not always operating in a heightened state and so I just want to say don't be afraid of mental health tools mindfulness journaling therapy um, medications like I just I'm I think in leveraging it it has helped my postpartum journey so much because instead of just trying to like suck it up hide my feelings get through it grin and bear it um, it has allowed me to get back to, you know, really enjoying motherhood and just being present in a way that I want to be present. So my takeaway for mental health, for this part of it, when it comes to like the mental health aspects is like motherhood is an emotional growth journey. Like it just is. Um, and it's okay to not have all the answers and just remember you're growing alongside not just your baby, but your family, your other children. So I, I think definitely leverage the tools um, that are out there if you, if you can. I highly suggest it. Now, this other part of my postpartum healing journey has been navigating relationships. So when it comes to just like with my husband, you know, having a baby has has changed the dynamic with my partner in ways I didn't expect, like positive, honestly. Um, I think we had to adapt our communication and we had to kind of redefine like what connection looks like. And so we had to look at like, how do we prioritize time together? And so since we weren't getting much sleep, we really got into, since he was on his um, baby leave and I'm on baby leave, we would like, we got into watching movies. Um, so we got into that. We did organization projects for the home. And I don't know. It was, it was just nice. We we 
we had to kind of like look at like what helping each other kind of looks like, um, kind of redefine like acts of service for each other. And um, so we had those moments and we also had difficult moments. Like it just he's tired and I'm tired. And, you know, we kind of just sometimes butt heads because we're exhausted. And so um, those are just the realities of just, you know, having a newborn and then mind you having the aspect like we're a blended family we have other children and so sometimes it could just be really stressful but um I'm thankful for my partner and that he does love to communicate and I do too and so we were we've always been able to communicate through any you know issues and so um I would just say that's really key also um when it comes to friendships um I can honestly say like my best friends have definitely leaned in and shown up um, in ways that I it, never expected and I'm and, and happy they did. And they've just been really supportive and understanding that if I haven't been able to communicate as much or can't visit, it's because, you know, I'm healing and dealing with a newborn and all my children and my husband. And so um, I've appreciated their support and understanding in that, that maybe our friendship might shift a little bit for the next year or two. Um as my son gets a little older and I can travel again and um, have a little more flexibility, we can definitely um, kind of go back to how things were in a certain aspect. Um, but I have learned to focus on people who generally support me and build a village with those connections. Um, I've just recognized that I don't need a huge circle. I just need a reliable one. <laughs> so, um, Many of the friends that have supported me through this postpartum healing journey have been my friends for um, a decade plus, some of them almost two decades, 20 year friendships, my family, um, Facebook, face like social media supporters. I was gonna say Facebook, but yeah, social media supporters. Um, yeah, I think that has been key is just still having my friends that I can call and talk to them and then just try to empathize and relate and be supportive. And then when I visit, like having uh, kid-friendly things that we can do um, so they can be included and I can still talk to my friend and we can talk about other stuff, but understanding that the kids will be a part. So I just have appreciated my friends and how they support me in this initial year because, you know, my husband's been deployed and I can't just travel in the way that I was traveling before. If I am traveling, I've got the kids. And so I've appreciated their support. And what I will say when it comes to navigating relationships, I think we just understand that relationships evolve over time. But the one, the most important relationships grow. And I think th- through this year, I've had to let go of certain friendships Because I just realized like, you know, they weren't showing up. They weren't showing up in the way I needed them to. Or it's not even just the way I needed them to. I think they were just like it was performative. And I'm just like, okay, if it's not going to be genuine, it's like, okay, I understand. Like just you can say in this moment of life, I cannot dedicate time to this friendship. Or, you know, I'm going to have to take a step back. But, you know. Some people were just giving lip service and I had to let that go. Um, So I'm just leaning on the village that have been there, tried and true for the last, you know, 10 or so years. What can I say when it comes to the joys and lessons from parenthood? Having a baby in my 30s, I can say this. Cherish the moments. One of the biggest surprises that I have really leaned into with my third child has been really loving the small moments. And I like film everything, take pictures of everything. And not that I didn't do that before, but I think as my son reaches every milestone and he's he's approaching one very quickly, one years old, and because I've done it two times before and now I already have a 10-year-old, it's like, man, it went by really quick. And so I just really want people to understand that really embrace the small moments because 
they'll be over before you know it. <laughs> and I say that because I look at videos of my daughter when she was, you know, a little baby, just like she could barely hold up her head. And now she's like, hey, can I film a TikTok? <laughs> and so I, I have to like understand like cherished moments are really tried and true. And so I think that's when I'm saying like that mental health journey and like understanding all women, um, you know, have our just mental health adjustments after giving birth. Um, I just wanted to make sure I was doing what I could do to be very present. And my husband always makes fun of me because he's like, oh, my gosh, Holly. Oh, my gosh, honey. Like, are you going to laugh every time or take pictures or clap every time he stands up? And I'm like, absolutely. Every time he crawls, I'm going to clap and, and think he's so great because once he passes this stage and then he's up walking and running around like that stage is gone. And because I've seen it two times before, I, I know it's coming. And so I just really want to cherish it. And I can say when it comes to life lessons, man, um, parenthood has taught me patience, especially in my mid thirties <laughs> in ways that I never imagined because honestly, I never thought, I always saw myself, if I was going to have kids, they were going to be three, but I don't think I saw it happening where it would be like two of my twenties and then take almost like take a break and then have my son. And, um, I think it's just taught me to, taught me to be more patient, but it's also taught me to embrace the messy and chaotic beauty of life. So understanding that not every day is perfect or everything just checks all the boxes, but every day is meaningful because I get to watch the little humans that I created grow. And I even get to see myself grow and the people that I love and care about grow with me, you know, and seeing those moments too. Um, so if I were to say, what would the so please understand moment be of this podcast episode would be motherhood isn't about doing it all perfectly it is about showing up with love and intention you're the right parent for your baby even when it doesn't feel like it trust that because it's true and I say that as someone who's had three children and while I'm nowhere close to being done with my motherhood parenthood journey I can see the evolution of because I've been so intentional and loving with my children they are just developing into such great individuals like I can see them they're just developing into some great humans and I just tell myself if I stay the course keep doing what I'm doing um you know as I pat myself on the back and as you should, as any parent, if you're, you know, you're doing a good job, you're being intentional, loving, you know, doing the best you can. Um, I'm, I, I really feel like I'm raising great little humans that will have, you know, go on to be these great people in the future. So, so please understand Motherhood stretches you, challenges you, and teaches you, but it also reveals how capable you are. You're growing right alongside your baby, and that's more than enough. And and just when I say alongside your baby, it's like I think about that. Like how far have I come in my motherhood journey in 10 years, 7 years with just my two daughters, and then now here I am doing this journey again with my son. So... Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to So Please Understand. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm sorry it is long overdue, but again, I've been going through my postpartum journey and I'm really reevaluating and being intentional with the content that I put out. And so I would just love to hear your own postpartum stories or what resonated with you in this episode. Um, share with me in the comments on social media or send me a message. Because I'd love to keep this conversation going um, and hearing from other mothers who've just had kids or who've been in your 30s or even your 40s. I just want to know, like, what were you, what was your postpartum journey like? 
And again, thank you for tuning in to So Please Understand. Please subscribe to my podcast. Check me out on my YouTube channel, So Please Understand, for other content there. And again, until next time. Bye. So please understand, insights for the mind, inspiration for the soul.